The reaction that occurs in the canister is the reaction of sodium bicarbonate and citric acid that both come from the Alka-Seltzer. They react together to form water, sodium citrate, and carbon dioxide. The pressure caused by the buildup of carbon dioxide is what makes the rocket fuel. You may have noticed in the equation on the last slide that h 2 is actually a product, not a reactant. Um, so what is the role of water? Well, water is um, ionizing the citric acid and disassociating the sodium bicarbonate, and it frees ions to react, which allows the reaction to happen. Now, because the definition of a favorable reaction is one that happens spontaneously, we decided that the reaction is not thermodynamically favorable before the water is added because the reaction is only spontaneous once the water is added. As for the purpose of the foil packet, the foil packet is made out of aluminum, which, um, while hydrophilic, is not water soluble. So the purpose of the foil packet is just to keep out water to make sure that none gets in so the reaction does not happen before uh, you want it to. So my slide was on how to maximize thrust. And in order to maximize the performance of our rocket, we had to understand how the amount of water in the rocket affected the system. And water in this system is reaction mass, or in other words, a working mass. And that's essentially just shot down from the rocket to produce acceleration. Um, this water, that's reaction mass, increases the efficiency of converting pressure energy to thrust and thus to the kinetic energy of the rocket, sending it upwards. Um, if there's not enough water, there's no efficient thrust, but on the other hand, if there's too much water, we are decreasing the volume of gas in the rocket, which decreases the energy stored in the rocket prior to takeoff. And too much water can result in an overexpansion of the small amount of gas present, leading to a partial vacuum that tries to suck back in the water, leaving, um, resulting in a little bit of a stuttering in the rocket taking off. The, therefore, um, there's a trade-off between the two effects of gas and water and the ratio there between and there exists a sweet spot somewhere in the middle. So to begin to determine max pressure, we know that it is dependent on volume and temperature. So we started there. Also assumed that it was an ideal gas because the volume of the gas was negligible compared to the container and we thought assumed that all the reactions um, the interactions between the molecules of the gas were elastic and no kinetic energy was lost and we determined the pressure from potential energy divided by volume that's the way we went about it um, starting from Boyle's law uh, we calculated our max pressure to be 0.1985 atms, which comes out to be very less than normal. So we do not know, correct or incorrect, but we know that pressure is less up here uh, in the Rocky Mountains than sea level, so um, that could be a factor in why it's less. Um, as well as other things that we do not know, but yes. For our future modifications, we realize that the film canister only allows for a limited and probably consistent amount of pressure to build up before the seal blows. Um, in order to increase the thrust of the rocket, the seal would need to be modified to allow for a higher buildup of pressure. This could be accomplished using a rubber seal that increases the surface area of contact between seal and the interior of the canister. Um, by increasing the surface area between the seal and the canister, the minimum friction that needs to be overcome by the buildup of gases would be increased and therefore allow for more gas to build up before the seal breaks. The modified rubber seal would need to be tested to ensure that the canister is still closed properly and burst suddenly as a possible issue could occur if the seal simply began to leak gas slowly out of an edge rather than detaching abruptly.